So, we're now a decade on from the start of Star Wars Rebels, one of the best animated shows Lucasfilm has ever made. StarWars.com posted 10 things you didn't know about Star Wars Rebels. We're not going to go into it, but it does highlight something that I really think needs to be addressed. How ideas Dave Filoni has often go unexplored for years and years before he introduces or reintroduces them into other shows. And another Star Wars creative who this applies to as well is Jon Favreau, who two years before The Mandalorian tweeted a picture and some information about Sabine's relationship with the Darksaber. Favreau was a big fan of Rebels. We know he was involved in the Clone Wars voicing pre Vista, but with Star Wars Rebels he'd been a fan for a while, and now in retrospect we can see that his interest with the Darksaber back then fed into him introducing it at the end of the first season of Mando, in the hands of Moff Gideon. Similarly, Dave Filoni will wait a long time before introducing concepts, and something I was thinking about reading this article on StarWars.com is how long has he had the idea of Balin and Shin. The reason I say this is multifaceted. The iconography and connection to the wolves is certainly present in Rebels, even though Balin and Shin aren't. That being said, he introduced the broader theme of Jedi survivors including Kanan Jarrus, Ahsoka Tano, and various Inquisitors we've come to love. For years he's admitted he is fascinated by the concept of certain Force users after Order 66, and the Ahsoka show offered him a new opportunity. With Balin and Shin, he wanted to explore a canon iteration of Dark Jedi, but more than anything, he wanted Balin to represent the tragic Jedi survivor trope, an archetype we've seen on various occasions in Star Wars Legends, of which my favourite can be seen in Coruscant's Nights. But in canon I think Balin was the best introduction of this in a live action show, an enigmatic mercenary, with a wisdom and philosophy that is still a mystery to the audience. Balin seems like the kind of character Filoni's had at the back of his mind for quite some time. Instead of exploring Jedi who want to rebuild the Order, pass on what they know to a Padawan to continue the traditions of the Jedi even if they're Boken, as is Ezra, and as is Shin, Balin was a sort of fallout from Order 66, someone who lived through the Republic, the Clone Wars, the rise of the Empire, but became disillusioned with traditional factions and disillusioned with the galaxy at large. He had the wisdom and experience of a Jedi, but in terms of his own beliefs, practices, and philosophy, he was more evolved, not bound by the same moral code or idealism characterized by the Jedi he was trained under during the days of the Republic. Filoni mentioned that Balin's story ties into larger themes of loss, legacy, and the search of meaning in the post-Jedi galaxy. He's a character who straddles the line between light and dark, and this complexity makes him anything but a typical antagonist. So did Filoni have this Dooku-inspired, rogue Jedi who survived Order 66 in mind when he first made Star Wars Rebels? I would say maybe some of the seeds of that idea were there. As aforementioned, Filoni tends to draw upon older concepts that were unused or inspired by other pieces of Star Wars media, either concocted by him, George Lucas, or others. And even if he had the split-second idea of introducing Balin into Star Wars Rebels back then, what would that have looked like? What kind of interactions would Balin have had prior to Ahsoka Season 1 that would fit into the Four Season arc during the Imperial days as a mercenary? Something I would have loved to have seen is if he came across Maul, and the reason I say this is because Dave Filoni had very similar themes in mind when reintroducing Maul into Star Wars Rebels. He sought to explore themes of, as I say, loss, vengeance, and the search of purpose, but of a very different and tragic kind. Because Maul wasn't a Jedi, he was a Sith, the apprentice to Darth Sidious in The Phantom Menace. And then he felt rejected, thrown away. Maul's storyline in Rebels is one of a former Sith Lord, struggling to regain control over his destiny. Filoni wanted to give us a different Maul to the one we saw in Episode 1, but also different to the way he's portrayed in the Clone Wars series. He had one chapter of his life as a Sith, then as a leader within the Star Wars underworld as the ruler of the Shadow Collective, and then Crimson Dawn, and in the Clone Wars series he was really a disruptor, trying to disrupt the plans of both Obi-Wan and on the other end Sidious, attempting to rise to power through his criminal syndicates and alliances. The chaotic element makes him extremely interesting, because while Rebels Maul is in a different period of his life, he still has some of that cunning and manipulation about him. But the crucial difference for Filoni was showing us Maul as a more tragic figure, which is why his encounter in Twin Sons with Obi-Wan remains one of the most powerful and impactful rematches in the entire saga. It brought a tragic sense of closure, and the dialogue in that episode is so underappreciated. Maul saying, Look what has become of you a rat in the desert. 
and Obi-Wan responding, Look what I've risen above. But his dying breath is goosebump-inducing. Tell me, is it the Chosen One? He is. He will avenge us. Maul was trapped by his hatred and desire for revenge. It reminds one of the Confucius Analect. Before you embark on a journey of revenge, dig two graves. And despite their history, Obi-Wan shows more compassion in his final moments. Now the reason I bring this up is I've always wondered, what if Maul had met Balin? Would his outlook have changed? And I'll tell you why. Maul was a former Sith, Balin a former Jedi. Both driven by the tragedy of their stories, both seeking power beyond their wildest dreams and looking beyond the typical paradigms of Force groups. And both struggled. Now they had a lot of differences. Maul's approach to Ezra was one of manipulation. We don't know if Balin's father-like relationship to Shin was kind of like this before Ahsoka, but I would say Balin and Shin was more of a pragmatic thing. And the irony is, Shin, like Maul, was chucked away by her master at a young age. I think while they share similarities, the biggest philosophical clash is between legacy and renewal. Maul clings to the past, his hatred of the Jedi, his resentment towards the Sith, his desire for personal revenge, Whereas Balin, Wal was once affected by all of those things, on the other hand has turned to the future, looking towards what is to come, interested in reshaping the galaxy and discovering something greater than the old Jedi-Sith conflict. The promise of a new beginning, the end to the cycle of all of those institutions, whatever is calling to him on Peridia. But had he met Maul around the time of Star Wars Rebels, how would each impact the other? Would their individual outlooks have changed, or could they have formed some kind of force alliance? going down different paths. Well, another big obstacle with this is how Maul might have criticized Balin for not having the fire or emotional drive that the dark side requires. Balin would have critiqued Maul's inability to let go of the past and move towards something more meaningful, but would Maul have found something in Balin that could have stopped that? But I have to wonder if the contrast between Balin's calm and measured demeanor would have actually helped Maul's intensity and emotional volatility, or would they have tested each other and been foes? Where would that have left Balin if he were there on Malachor? I think regardless of his motivations at that time, he would have helped Ahsoka and Maul take down the Inquisitors. Because if his dialogue in the first season of Ahsoka further down the line is anything to go by, back then, he still would have been angry at what happened to the Jedi Order, disillusioned with a new empire that rose, angry at what Anakin had become, and his minions, the Inquisitors. There's a lot of questions I wonder with what Dave Filoni is doing now versus what he established in Rebels, but I must wonder if he had those ideas at the time, and how Balin would have fit into the scope of Star Wars Rebels. It's all hypothetical and fun speculation. And then I start wondering, what if Balin had come across Bendu, the one in the middle? Some fan theories which I'm not too convinced by say that that is what is calling to Balin. I don't think so. I believe it's something more sinister. Another proposition? What if it was Balin, instead of Darth Maul, who tried talking Ezra into a new kind of paradigm? The complicated mentor-type figure, offering Ezra something different than Kanan. And I know both of these characters are in the Ahsoka show, but I'm specifically talking about if Balin had been introduced in the animated show, when Ezra was younger, before what happened on Lothal. Even though Rey is gone, and they're probably going to recast, he's a character we simply must learn more about. What do you guys think? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give me a big fat thumbs up, subscribe if you're new, check me out on socials, at StarWarsMeg1 on Twitter, and the link to my Patreon is down below. But until the next one, my dear friends, may the Force be with you, always.